Uh, Shabazz is a man that does, he is his own introduction. Uh, he's a national evangelist, an international evangelist. He's on the national lectureships every year. I watch all of his stuff wherever he goes. And uh, one of my favorite preachers, if you will, he's an exegete, one of the great expositors that are still in our brotherhood. And we're grateful for the way that he uses his gift for the kingdom. He did an outstanding job on yesterday, didn't he? Did an outstanding job. And uh, after the program, he said, man, we, we, we just did a little something. He said, but we're going to have church tomorrow. Amen. Amen. So I've just been waiting in anticipation. And I, I was just uh, like a little boy sitting at the table at the dinner with, with Dr. Lawton and Dr. Shabazz, just sitting there taking in all the information. They back stories back and forth. And I wish I had a recorder, but they probably wouldn't allow that. But I just took all the stuff in that I could. And, and uh, just bringing great insights for uh, their years of ministry and the things that they could uh, pass on to help a young preacher along this Pilgrim Highway. So uh, after a verse of a song, we're going to have Dr. Shabazz to come in his own way to deliver the word of God. Well, he has his wife and his daughter with him. We enjoy having them. Uh, and well, we're, he's going to uh, introduce them, I'm sure, uh, in just a moment. Uh, but we're great. We want to. We want to now get to know that they're loved and that they're cared for. I've been telling them all about who we are. They said they've been enjoying us so far. But we want this, them to make this a memorable event uh, because they they were uh, came in contact with the New Haven Church of Christ family. Amen. 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 Uh, we want to show them all the love that we can. Let the spirit of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the spirit of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the praise. And I believe that what God has done in the past yeah. is but a testimony of what God is willing to do for you in the future. Mm -hmm. And if you just keep on staying on the straight and narrow toward uh, salvation, uh, believe me, if you do what you're supposed to do, yes, you better believe God going to do what he's supposed to do. Yes, Amen. It's a distinct honor to have with me uh, my wife uh, and one of our girls. We have three three girls. Um Renette is, is, is with us. Um, she's been trying to make her and uh, uh, myself and her mother think that she's taking care of us. <laughs> yeah, I know what that means. So, yeah. so I'm okay, babe. <laughs> right, so, uh, but she's one of my road dogs. You know, we went to Fort Lauderdale earlier this year and used it. Renette can go, we say, go. You know, she's going in to get off from work, and, and she's, she's coming. She loves the Lord, loves the Lord's church, and you will always see her not far in my shadow. I'm always honored to have my wife, Sister Shabazz. You probably have met her before. Just wave your hand here a little bit. And, uh, just, uh, to have her. and uh, I'm, I'm very, very honored uh, today to be in the presence of, of one of these great pioneers. <laughs> that was, we were at, we were at a area White, Dr. Lawton hosts an area White preachers meeting uh, every January, and, um, I know it's every year. I've been going to it for 16 years. I, you know, I know it's every year. And we were about to dismiss, and Brother Thomas, one of the young men that Brother Lawton uh, trained to preach, bless his heart. Uh, we were getting ready to dismiss, and you know, and then he started praying for us pioneers. And he started praying for Dr. Lawton and, and, and Brother Shabazz. And I just, you know, I lost it. You ever lost it in prayer? <laughs> And I'm going, whoa, 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 bro. I ain't nobody's pioneer. <laughs> I ain't nobody's pioneer. You know, I'm glad I'm loved and all like that. But I just want to set the record straight today. Dr. Lawton is the pioneer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He is. He's the pioneer. I mean, he's been around for decades and decades and decades. <laughs> and, and <laughs> that, that's how you get to be a pioneer. I mean, you, you, you know, you don't get to be no pioneer because you've been preaching for 15 years. That's not the way it works, right, Dr. Lawton? I mean, that, that's not the way it works. I mean, it's just not the way it works. And uh, so I, I just I just say that respectfully because I have a lot of respect for right. Dr. Lawton. And uh, we were at dinner, and uh, Norm asked a question. And I, he probably don't realize it, but I never answered any of the questions that he asked. Because <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Lawton was sitting there at the table. You know, I want to hear the answer too. <laughs> You know, so the reason why I didn't say anything was not out of disrespect. You know, I mean, we had Dr. Lawton sitting, and I feel the same way that Norman feels. We have Dr. Lawton sitting at the table, and, and uh, you know, so I want to get an answer. 
So, uh, you know, just y'all don't get it twisted. <laughs> uh, Dr. Lawton's the pioneer. And uh, I've been around for a little while. You know, I've got a little experience under my belt. But uh, I ain't ready for the pioneer thing. <laughs> you know, give me a minute. <laughs> we get to the pioneer part. All right, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on with me this morning to the book of Romans, chapter 1. And if you'll meet me at verse 13, Romans chapter 1 and verse 13. I, Norman, I just feel like I'm in a very structured pulpit. I notice that this thing don't move. And, you know, I can tell the sisters got this lined up right along. So I'm, I'm not supposed to, that means I ain't supposed to move none of these. You just, I just come down. It's okay. This is what I, so I might, I don't want to scare nobody. I might come down before it's all over with. I just get the feeling I'm supposed to stay right here. That's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> now I would not have you ignorant, Brett, how that oftentimes I propose to come unto you but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you even as among other Gentiles. I am better both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am now ready to preach the gospel to you that at Rome also. For well, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. I want to use for a subject today, and I want to borrow it from the verbiage of the Apostle Paul. I want to use for a subject, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Turn to your neighbor, smile at him, and tell somebody, I am not ashamed. Please be seated. Somewhere in the year of our Lord, A.D. 57, 58, the Holy Spirit of God fell upon the Apostle Paul and Paul picked up a pen powered by inspiration and wrote this letter, this epistle, if you will, to the church in the capital city of his day. I want you to know that the Apostle Paul is a man to be regarded, he's a man to be respected, and he is a man to be honored. The Apostle Paul was none other than a first century globe-trotting academician. By globe-trotting, I will remind you that the Apostle Paul, during his tenure, uh, undergirded no less than three missionary journeys as he moved about Iconium, Lystria, Derby, Antioch, or Pisidia, and parts beyond, propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ, preaching Jesus and him crucified, and establishing congregations of the churches of Christ throughout the then known world. An academician, I say, because Paul was not an ignorant man by anybody's standards. He was a former member of the Sanhedrin Council. He sat literally at the feet of Gamaliel and was trained in the old Judaic law. He was in every sense of the consideration of a academician. He was truly a globe trotter and he believed in preaching one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. It was that Paul that wrote this letter to the capital city of his day. I know what scholars have to say, but let me tell you something. Regardless of what people may say, by all indication of the text, Paul had never ever physically been to the city of Rome. I know that because he said, to come on to you many times, but was let him of two, that I might have some fruit among you, even as among other Gentiles. In other words, Paul said, the Holy Spirit had not forbidden me, I would have come physically to Rome, laid my hands on you and imparted and conferred upon you miraculous abilities so that I could have some fruit among you, even as among other Gentiles. So I know Paul never bodily, physically, personally went to the city of Rome, but you know something, when you are walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, as those apostles did in the first century, he didn't have to go down to Rome to send a message to Rome, he did not have to be bodily, physically present in order to do the work and to propagate the mission of God, and so Paul picked up his pen, powered by inspiration and wrote to them and said, I really have been wanting to come for a long time. I've really been wanting to 
and preach Jesus and him crucified personally. I really been wanting to lay my hands on you to confer miraculous gifts, but I've got a message that I need to undergird. I got a, I got a truth that I want to resonate in your spirit. I want you to know that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want you to know why I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because of the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God. And not only is it the power of God, but it's the power of God that leads men to salvation. Doesn't matter whether you are a Jew or if you are a Greek or if you are a Gentile. Y'all don't hear me? It doesn't matter whether you are in New York or in Connecticut. It doesn't matter if you are black or if you are white or Hispanic. It does not matter where you come from in terms of your educational background. There is power in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if a man will receive the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, he can receive the power of God on the salvation. And I want everybody to know I'm not ashamed. We live in a time today where the world is trying to make me and you be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We live in a time where secular humanism has ran rampant. You know what? I asked myself a couple of, 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 of what happened questions. You ever ask yourself a what happened question? I asked myself the question, why is it that 35 years ago in America, you could not turn on the television at prime time? Prime time is from 6 a.m. in the morning to 10.30 at night. You could not 30 years ago turn the television on and see the body of a naked woman or a naked man that was absolutely forbidden. You would not see it. But something has changed. And I want to know when did it change and how did it change? 30 years ago, you could not turn on the radio in the United States of America and hear a disc jockey call a woman a female dog. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. Uh, you couldn't do it 30 years ago, but it changed. Who changed the FCC rules and regulations? Why is it now possible to hear profanity, to see a uh, elude explicit nakedness on television? I want to know when did it change? How did it change? Who changed it? Why did it change? Aren't the minds of my baby important? Isn't the purity of the minds of my children also significant and important? Is it not also important that my children not be exposed to too much too soon? Not be put in a position where they have to unduly face immorality and improprieties? Am I not due to respect and the honor of God and we protected my children from the filth and the murk and mire of Satan's demonic tools? Am I not deserving of the respect of God and my family away from the evil of a world that's trying to destroy them? I stop by to tell you today that the world that we live in has changed and secular humanism has changed it. Folk want to do away with God. They want to do away with the church. They want to do away with the Bible. They want to do away with truth. They want to do away with morality. They want to do away with what's right and what's wrong. They want to do away with your trying to walk right, talk right, sing right, pray right. Y'all don't hear me today. They want to do away with going in the right direction. But I came to tell you today that no round-eyed slope showed it too late and put his pants one leg at a time, man, is gonna make me ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nobody gonna make me ashamed of the God of eternal salvation. Nobody gonna make me ashamed of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Nobody gonna make me ashamed of the blood part, hell proof, heaven bound, holy ghost fear, institution of the Lord. I said, nobody is gonna make me ashamed of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I am not ashamed. Now come here. Let me whisper something in your ear. Church folk are not ignorant. Y'all don't have to say amen. I brought my own. Amen. When you presuppose that we have a conviction in the word of God, 
which explains the will of God, which shows us the worship of God, simply because we are ignorant, unlearned, and emotional people. Y'all don't hear me. How dare you have the humiliating God to think that we don't know why we believe what we believe. Y'all ain't going to have to preach it here. I'm insulted. I call myself a fairly intelligent man. Relatively speaking. <laughs> How dare you presuppose that we are only people of faith because we are weak people? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now, see, I'm ready to fight. <laughs> I remember the fact, I, I stopped by Hartford, Connecticut to tell you that we are not ashamed because we know why we believe what we believe. Okay, two of y'all know. <laughs> let, let me tell you something. I put my trust, my hope, my faith, and my confidence in the God of eternal salvation. That's the first thing I want to tell you. I, I trust God. I believe God. I follow God. I let God lead me. God is not a God, he's the God. He's the only one true and wise God. And let me tell you something, uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not the same God of Islam. He's not the same God of Buddha. Let me tell you something, Dr. Lawton, the God of Islam doesn't have a son. But the, but the, but the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he has a son. You see, they are not one and the same, and I'm not ashamed of that God. Now, that God who is our Father, who is our Creator, who initiated eternal salvation, He turned around and gave us the Word. The Word can lead us from earth all the way to glory. That's why I put my faith and my trust and my hope and my confidence in the Word of God. Do you hear me, Connecticut? I'm not ashamed of the Word of God. I, I think I need to come down here now so I can look at some of y'all. I said I'm not ashamed of the Word of God. I'm not ashamed because the Word of God came from God. I am clearing my mind about the verbal, plenary inspiration of the Word of God. I said the verbal, plenary inspiration of the Word of God. I said the verbal. That means God spake God who at some time and died and down spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in the last day spoken unto us by his Son. That means God spake. I said verbal, plenary. That means authoritative. God is not authoritative. God is all authoritative. God has all power and all authority in his hand. I said the verbal, a uh, plenary. Uh, uh, God has all authority, inspiration. That means God speaks. That means God talks. That means God breathes. Y'all got a minute for this? Let me tell you why I trust the word of God because the word of God did not start with man. The word of God started with God. Uh, I, that's why I, I'm not ashamed of it because it starts with God. Don't y'all ever forget that the word doesn't start with man. The word started with God. Man doesn't even have enough integrity to tell itself that if he don't live right, he's going to die and go to hell. He don't have enough integrity to tell himself the truth. Let me tell you something. God is the architect of the word. God is the designer of the word. God is the giver of the word. God is the inventor of the word. God gives permission for the word. You see, the word began with the Father up in heaven. I know it did because the record says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. But wait a minute, the process did not stop there. You see, God who invented the word turned around and gave the word to his son and our Savior Jesus Christ. I heard the Hebrew writer write in Hebrews chapter 2 and beginning verse number 1 he said the word of Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 he said that the word of God with some time and in divers manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person of holding all things by the word of his power set the right hand of the throne of the majesty on high. Don't y'all let me stand up here and get happy in the morning. 
Amen. Let me tell you something. Jesus is a bad boy. Y'all kids don't know what a bad boy is. Jesus don't believe in drive-bys. Jesus believes in direct hits. He ain't gonna never shoot at you and take off. Jesus is a bad boy. You boys wanna learn how to be bad? Let me tell you about a man named Jesus. Jesus had a fellow messing with him all the time and he got sick and tired of it. Tempting him and trying him and messing with him. And Jesus got his spiritual GPE system and found out where the devil lived. Went down to the devil's house, kicked down his front door, walked in the front door, beat that devil three days and three nights in his own house. And let me tell you what bad he is, boy. He is bad. When he got to whooping, he took his house keys. And then he said, oh. Of the word of God, I believe it because it began with the Father. Father gave it to the Son. 
son, son gave it to the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost inspired me and inspired me, wrote it down in the book. And you know what? I'm not ashamed. I want to tell the second of things. The infidel, the non-belief, he who rejects God, then the church, we're not ashamed. How dare you think we are ashamed? And I know we're living in a time of Connecticut where there's so much controversy. There's controversy everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Controversy everywhere. But that's no reason for me to turn my back on God. Somebody asked me uh, not long ago, said, you, you still preaching that homosexuality is a sin? That's all right, I'm almost done. Don't get uncomfortable. If it's still in the Bible, I'm still preaching. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and, 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 and by, by the way, I ain't gonna remind me in about two minutes to get off of this. That's your job. <laughs> Let me tell you something. What is wrong with us? What is wrong with us? I want to ask y'all a question. I, I'm just asking. Can I ask a question? I ain't messing with that. I just want to ask a question. That's what I'm asking. Now, the Bible says, now y'all know I'm going to quote the Bible. I don't care if you do that. I'm going to quote the Bible. The Bible says, marriage is honorable in all. Hmm. And the bed. Y'all better say man before I get off this bed. Y'all gonna say man, I'm gonna get on this bed. You don't want me to tell you what's in that bed. The bed of the man is under fire. But home. Mm-hmm. And a doctor is God showed you. Now, that tells me that physical intimacy is preserved for the sanctity of the marital body. Yes, yes, yes. Y'all getting uncomfortable? Y'all all right? Y'all getting uncomfortable? Y'all all right? I said, God did that. I didn't do it. You're get your jaw tight. You're going to get tight with God. I'm just the messenger. God said he preserved that intimacy for the marital body. That's what he said. Y'all all right? Yeah. Yeah. Now that takes a male and a female. Now what I want to know, and this is my question right here. If God condemns sexual intimacy outside of the marriage bond, what made two lesbians think that they deserve a privilege that heterosexuals don't deserve? Well, I'm just asking a question, you understand? I'm just asking a question. What makes you think you're entitled to some other folk ain't entitled to? Who rose up and made you king of entitlement? I ain't trying to bother nobody. I'm just asking a question. Some of y'all get real uncomfortable. I'm just asking a question. And, and, and then I want to ask this here, and I'm going to get off of this. You know, just say for the sake of argument. <laughs> you know, just, just type that. Okay, so woman A is in love with woman B. Um. For the sake of argument, okay. <laughs> it ain't right. Yeah, yeah. But for the sake of argument. Okay. Yeah, so it is what it is. Yeah. Woman A is in love with woman B. Um. Uh-huh. All right. But here's my question. Why one of y'all got to try to act like a man? That's what I want. That's what I want. I get the fact that you're in love, all right? I'm not stupid in my head. I got that part. But what I don't understand is a rat in this kitchen. I better get off of this. I, I, I better get off of this. Some of y'all are real uncomfortable. <laughs> I love y'all anyway. I'm going to tell you something. Right is right wrong is wrong. I don't care who's good. Right is right wrong is wrong. 
we, 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 you know, I'm not ashamed. Yes. And folks say, well, I don't believe that. Well, whatever, blow your head back. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not changing my conviction in the word of God because you don't think it's possible. That's my message today. Yes, I'm not going to walk away from the cross of Calvary. I'm not walking away from the church. I'm not walking away from the word of God. I'm still going to take the Lord's Supper on the first day of the, uh, every week. And when I take the Lord's Supper, I'm going to put some money in the contribution plate so I can advance the cause of the kingdom. And I'm going to listen to the gospel preach so that the wise can get wiser. Amen. And I'm going to sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And you know what? I'm coming back next Sunday. I'm coming back next Sunday. And next Sunday, I'm going to do the same thing. As long as God let the word stand, I'm going to keep, y'all hear me? You come at it again? I'm going to keep doing it, and keep doing it, and keep doing it, and keep doing it, until Jesus said, that's enough. Come on. I'm not, I'm not ashamed. How dare you think we're supposed to be ashamed? Folks, I'm you still preaching that is still in the book. Amen. Right. Right. Hey you ain't wrote no Bible. If you did, I ain't following it. Amen. <laughs> hey, because I guarantee you, you put some stuff in there, you can't even live yourself. Amen. Are y'all all right? Yeah. I'm going to stay with the Word of God. I'm just going to stay with, with the Word of God. That's what I'm saying today. I'm going to stay with the Word of God. Y'all stop trying to act like you shame. You, 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 well, it ain't popping. I don't care if it is popping. You don't decide whether something true or false based on whether people, let me tell you something. Can I tell you something? People ain't got no hell to put you in. They ain't got no heaven to send you to. So now, some of y'all got upset with me. I want you to know I love you anyway. I, I do. I love you anyway. But, but you know what, man? I, I'm a fairly smart fellow. And what I did is I just cut a very fair proposition. You sitting there mad because I mentioned lesbian, but you're not bothered about the fact that I mentioned the other folk. You're bothered about that. Amen. I'm saying sin is sin. Whether it's two boys, two girls, a boy and a girl. If you like it, put a ring on it. You can't put no ring on it if it ain't a male and a female. Y'all all right? Somebody say, I don't believe that. But that's your problem. You believe in yourself more than you believe in God. That's all right. I love you anyway. I love you, I love you enough to tell you the truth. Right. And what I came to tell you is that I'm not ashamed. We've got to hold on to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You don't let people make you ashamed of long standing truths that have been around before they were ever born and going to be here when they dead and gone. You understand what I'm saying? Church, you know what? I mean, we're thinking the wrong way about this in the church. We need to change this. We need to change that. We need to change up. We need to be different. Hey Amen. You, so, you know, we did problem here recently. What well, we did, because I had, you know, I had what I call the millennial attack. Y'all yeah. know what the millennial attack is? Mm-hmm. It's when the millennials stand up and say, you know what We, 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 we should be running this day. <laughs> we <laughs> don't well, think I'm talking. So I'm going to tell you what I did. I said, okay. Well, before you do that, I want to show you millennials something. And I'm going to tell you what we did at home. What I did is I got a male and a female from the builder's generation. That would be Brother Lawton's generation, back in the 1930s. Let me tell you something, every generation's paradigm, don't listen to me, listen to me, because this don't make sense to you. You're getting ready to have an old wild moment. Every paradigm is shaped by the generation they come out of. See, Dr. Lawton come from a generation that taught him how to appreciate money. Because he came along not too many years after the Great Depression, where money was very, the banks were closed. And what they learned out of that generation is you don't play with money. The builder generation believe if you can't pay for it, you don't deserve it. Yeah. Amen. They don't believe in getting $15 million in debt, dollar down, and dollar when I catch you. Wow. Amen. Amen. So that's the way they think. Then, 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 you've got, then you have, uh, you have the, 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 the baby boomers. You know, they, they saw the assassination of JFK, Martin Luther King. They were the first one uh, to be the recipients of, uh, of mass uh, advertisement and mass sales. Uh, they were the first generation uh, to, to uh, receive pamper diapers. So I'm just old enough to remember when my mama used to have a cramp. She was a cramp. Then we really went uptown. I came home one day and daddy just bought a roll of mama didn't have to cramp. It had electricity. <laughs> 
she was standing there feeding the diaper in and squeezing the diaper, but we was uptown, dog. We was uptown. No, man, we were the first one on our street to have a color television. You know what it was? Daddy went down to the store and bought a, a, a plastic piece of paper that had blue on the top, red in the middle, and green on the bottom. And Daddy took that thing and put it on the television. We had color television. First one on our block. We was uptown. Y'all gonna ask if you want to. We was uptown. <laughs> yeah, y'all 65 inch plasma looking folk, HD, K4. <laughs> High definition generation. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we set them at the table. Then we got uh, two folk from the millennial generation. Then we put two people out to them, two little kids. It's called the generation not yet named. Because they don't have enough data on it to know what y'all are yet. And I put them all at a table in front of the church. And I showed them that this generation thinks this way. This generation thinks that way. The millennials think this way. The generation that's not named, they think another way. Now let me tell you something. All these generations think they're right. You millennials think y'all the only one on the planet Earth who don't understand another generation. Well, I got a news flash for you. We don't understand you either. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't the long range. As a matter of fact, every generation's generation is real to them. Mm -hmm. Y'all all right? So what you got to understand about the Church of Christ and ministry is we are not ministers to one generation. We are transgenerational ministers. We ministers to everybody that got baptized for the remission of sin. We everybody's minister. Amen. Not just a millennium. I love y'all. I told them my heart, my love, I mean, you ain't got no money. <laughs> Amen. You want to take over the church? Being all that nerd, clapping your hands, dancing, raising your hands. <laughs> hey man, you got all that love for Jesus, but you ain't putting none of that love in the plate. Big mama, big mama, I'm looking out for big mama. I ain't thinking about y'all, I'm looking out for big mama, mom. You better wake up, son, and look out for big mama. Big mama ain't putting the five dollars in the plate, but she put a five dollars in the plate every month. Every month. Big mama don't miss no money. I love y'all back. Amen. Big mama gonna put in there every month. Son, I ain't got a five dollar, but you can this is my, my, my contribution. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A Amen. And, and some of y'all young folk that's mad at me now. You mad at me because you ain't putting nine dime in the contribution. Oh, that's why you're mad. You yeah. got the nerve to stand up there and tell it. Okay. But you want the building to be open and the lights to be on. Amen. All I'm saying, all I'm saying, brothers and sisters. Don't let the devil make a fool out of you. Amen. That's all Brother Shabbat said. Don't, make, don't let the devil make a fool out of you. Uh, it's been multi-generations in the church a long time before you ever came along. Amen. And this stuff that the millennials are talking, it was a time when we baby boomers talked the same. Wow. And I'm going to tell you right now, this generation is not yet named. Keep laying down at night getting up in the morning. Amen. And it's going to come a time when they're going to think y'all are crazy. Right. <laughs> Keep on laying down at night getting up in the morning. And see if it don't change. But 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 our, but our, our, our anchor, what holds us down, what helps us know what's too much and what's not enough, is not generations, is not people, is not men, is not isms, is not the doctrines of men. It is the unadulterated word of Jehovah God. That's what it is. Somebody say I'm not ashamed. I don't fool me. Somebody say I'm not ashamed. I can't hear y'all. I want you to tell me I'm not ashamed. I'm gonna hold on to God. I don't know about y'all. God has brought me too far. Now, now I admit that I'm not everything I want to be, but I sure thank God I ain't what I used to be. God has brought me from. I, I mean, I got a ways to go. I got some things I'm working on. Amen. I got some junk and some stuff and some things. Everybody got some junk and some stuff and some things. Well, I know y'all church of Christ folks show up here on Sunday morning trying to look like sin and never touch your more body. Yeah, y'all come up in here on Sunday. Y'all funny. Y'all church of Christ people funny. Come up in here on Sunday morning. You, you silly enough to think that a peppermint and some visine was enough to cover up your Saturday night. 
Man, stop playing. Stop playing. What's up in here? That, you know, put a little cologne on. You know, a little peppermint on your breath. Half a bottle of Vizine. Like we can't tell you, been out shaking up and down all night. <laughs> Come on, man, stop playing. Stop playing. I can smell your Saturday night. Y'all help me if you can. But thank God at least you're here. <laughs> Some of y'all be come to drag your Saturday night. <laughs> you be drag your Saturday night right on up in the house of God. But sooner or later, we're going to know better. And when we know better, we do better. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, I'm going to know better. I'm going to know better. And then I'm going to do better. I'm, gonna do better. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. That's my message. That's my message. I'm going to push that to me I want you to listen to me because the next thing I'm getting ready to do may be very well be the most important thing that I've done today. Somewhere between birth and the age of accountability, you need to hear the gospel. Yeah. Romans 10 and 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And then when you hear, believe the gospel with all your heart. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When you hear the gospel and believe it, you got to change your life. Let me tell you something. I don't figure out. I don't figure out nothing out. You keep on doing what you always did. You just don't get what you always got. Keep on doing what you always did. You just don't get what you always got until you change. The Bible calls that repentance. Acts seventeen and verse thirty. The time of this ignorance, God went that, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. And then you must confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God. That's the confession. You know what uh, the, the, the tenured preachers used to say years ago? Uh, confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart. They really knew what they were talking about. If you, if you go back and do a, 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 an in-depth study, it's called uh, 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 etymological study. Etymology is the study of the origin and beginning and usage of words. And, uh, and you look at uh, the word homelogo. That's the word confession. It's a compound word. It's two words put together. Homeo. Homo is the word from which we get our English word homosexual. It means one of the same. Mm -hmm. Right? Logo or logos means word. So you confess with your mouth the same word that you believe in your heart. Don't say amen when you can. Amen. What is that? I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Acts 8.37 is the apostolic example. I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And based on that, we will immerse you in water, beneath the water, for the remission of sin. And if you want to go to heaven, you don't have to be immersed in water for the remission of sin. Well, preacher, I ain't ready. Well, you ain't ready to go to heaven. I understand. I understand. You say, well, I ain't ready. I understand. But you also ain't ready to go to heaven. Because ain't nobody going to heaven that ain't been immersed in water for the remission of sin. That's the plan. It's God's heaven. We're his creation. It's his work. It's his plan. And the only way we're going to get there is his way. Uh -huh. That's just the way it works. We fathers understand that, right? We tell everybody at the house, my way or highway, right? Mm -hmm. And then what you tell the people at the house? Mm -hmm. Well, that's his house. It's his way or no way. So you got to hear the word, believe it, repent of sin, confess Christ, and then be buried in the liquid tomb of baptism. You arise as a new creature in Christ Jesus. Christ will add you to the church, Acts chapter 2, verse 47. And I'm going to tell y'all something right now. Brush your Bible, this gentleman, I'm not speaking for no other preacher. I'm not standing here all night arguing with y'all about the church of the Bible. You get through arguing about it, he ain't added to none of them, but he is. That's the only one he's going to add to. Is his church, he bought it? And that's what he's going to add to. Now y'all got quiet. Now I'm trying to stop preaching. And y'all get quiet. Amen. Y'all all right? Mm -hmm. See, now y'all made me mad. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm using some advice. If that upsets you, I know what y'all say. I heard y'all, yeah, they go, he preaching this time, they go, tete cha tete cha And all the time, they make me sick with that, tete cha And all the time, tete cha cha Preach, man, got up there preaching this time, and everybody ready to, and then he stopped that old stuff again, all that old tete cha 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 I'm talking going to give you some advice because I love you. I'm going to tell you something because I love you. You got a problem with the church being named after the one who died for it? You better go home and get started tonight. Figuring out how you're going to explain this to God 
Because everything at your house got your little writing name on it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me names or not. You took a whole day off from work, went down there, and just so you can get a mortgage in your name. <laughs> you answered questions for them people that wasn't even none of their business. Insulting questions. Now, like, like what's your mama made in that? <laughs> My mama made name. My mama ain't trying to get credit. <laughs> but you want your name on that house, that apartment, that condo, that car. You will tell them that. <laughs> you found the wife. First thing you did was change her name. Why? Why? I'm going to send a clear message. This one here belongs to me. All them little no-neck monsters at the house got your name. <laughs> All of them got your name. <laughs> then you roll up in the church and you get mad at the preacher because he said the church is named after the one who died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But everything you own got your name. How do you plan on explaining that to God? That it's not important. Yeah. Then God will look at you and say, well, why was it important for you? All oh, your junk got your name. Yeah. Your credit cards yeah. all got your name. Yeah. But you got a problem with the church. Amen. 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 You bought yours. He died for his. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God hear the amen. 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 Then for people who can't get it, he turned around and married. Yeah. And every self-respecting woman Where's her man's name? I know that's right. I like the way them sisters say, say that. <laughs> Somebody say, I'm not a chef. Nah, do me a favor. Ushers, lock the door. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I could ever want to be. The only folk that going to be walking for the next few moments. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody in. You young folk, get up and start walking out. I'm gonna take this microphone and bust you in the back of your mouth. <laughs> Nobody walking. The only folk gonna be walking for the next few moments are those who are coming to Jesus. Y'all say amen. amen. Now I understand, I've been a long time, some of y'all got to go, and we're gonna get you out of here. But you can spare a few moments while somebody's thinking about their salvation. And here's what I wanna ask you to do. If you need the special prayers of the church, we'll be happy to pray with you, pray for you. When we sing the Savior's invitation, you just get up and start walking. And we'll pray with you. We'll pray for you. If you're here today and t today is your day and you want baptism for the remission of sin, you want to leave your born again. The water's ready. It's warm. We got clothing for men, for women. You don't have to go home to get anything. You don't have to take a six-month preparatory class. You, you don't have to do all that. You don't have to you just hear the word, believe it, repent of your sins, confess Christ, be baptized, and, and we'll immerse you in water for the remission of your sin. You can go home today and say and you start concentrating on tomorrow. You don't have to worry about yesterday. You took care of yesterday. Now you got to be careful about tomorrow. Amen. But that's enough. Tomorrow's enough without worrying about yesterday. Do I hear the amen? amen. Yeah, so, so you can do that. So what I want to ask you to do, if you want, if you want to repent of your past sin, then, then, then come on forward to repent of your sin. Y'all do brush your Bible's favor. I know I'm not in Harlem. I know I'm not. Please, don't come down here with no 15-minute speech. I didn't already preach the sermon. I didn't already preach the sermon. You, you know, you have to come down here and tell us when and who it was and how long it took and where it happened. You, you don't have to do that. Just, uh, brothers and sisters, I've sinned. i repented. I need y'all to pray with me and to pray with me and to pray for me. Is, is that all right? And uh, so, but now my job is hard because the devil wants you to leave here just like you can. Amen. Like you are right now. That's how you want you to leave. Yeah. Amen. Y'all are a model to me. I ain't going to church if I'm just going to stay the way I am. I'm not going to stay the way I am. If, 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 I, if I ain't going to be better, then I'm not going to stay out there in the world. Amen. Amen. So if you need the special prayers of the church, I want to ask you to come. Uh, if, if, if you need baptism, I want to ask you to come. If you brought a visitor, turn to him, smile. Tell him, I love you. Do you want to walk down there? And then you take him by the hand. And you come on and walk with him. Is that all right? right. Y'all all right? Amen. Now, God is waiting. Amen. Heaven is pleading. Yes. Mercy is everywhere. Amen. It's there for the asking. It's there for the happy. Stand to your feet, would you? Let's do this right here. Yeah, amen.
Just in Jesus, cause I know he's gonna be